Welcome to the Car Deal Advisor Podcast Show. The presenter of this show is Hugh Hetrick. Get ready for special motoring legends and great deals on your next set of wheels. So the five red lights have just gone out and it's go, go, go. Good morning and welcome to the Cardio Advisor podcast show with me, Hugh Hattrick, and my very special guest, Jonathan Sutherland. Hello there, Hugh. How is life in Duns? Fantastic. Couldn't be better. Surrounded by the fastest Romanian cars in the world. <laughs> when you think of the best cars in the world and the excitement and the glamour, I always think of Romania. <laughs> 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 yes, doing good, doing good. Had a lovely Christmas and New Year. Um, managed to get 74 miles to the gallon out of my dats here, which is phenomenal. But before the people switch off, we better tell them what's happening tonight. So we've got two big stories. Of course, if you've had the news on at any time in the last uh, 24 hours, you'll hear about Jaguar Land Rover having to lay off 4,500 staff across the whole of the country, everywhere where they have headquarters and administration staff. I don't think it's going to affect quite so much the factory staff, um, but it's quite a big story. What do you think about that, John? I'm just amazed that any company needs 4,500 admin staff. How come they got 4,500 admin staff too many? This is the problem <laughs> with management, isn't it? It doesn't matter if it's a car manufacturer or any other kind of business. Managers just keep hiring more managers to give themselves promotions and getting more and more people underneath them to boss about. How have they got 4,500 people that they can fire? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it must be 90% of the admin staff gone. <laughs> it, it does sound a bit like yes, minister, certainly, doesn't it? You know, it cut does. to the bone. Pair to the bone. <laughs> you pair to the bone. <laughs> no, no. They're going to have to get and a walk around with just 20,000 administrators. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, it and is then... extraordinary that, because it doesn't seem to be the production side that they're they're losing the, the staff on. It seems to be admin staff, which seems yeah. extraordinary that they could get that bloated um, in, yeah, in admin exactly. at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I know it's a big, big difference, certainly. I mean, they said that the Jaguar products are the struggling the most because they're 90% diesel. And, of course, with all the move to electric cars, um, that's what's affected them. And they found, obviously, a bit of a downturn in China. But to be fair, I looked at some of the figures, and, you know, they weren't actually down that much. And their actual sales figures in Britain are actually up by a few percent. So it's not necessarily all bad. Um, so you kind of wonder, I think they're obviously they're thinking about the future to how they can really compete. And obviously, there's new electric stuff coming, like the iPace. It's already here. In fact, I saw one the other day, and it, it looked impressive. It was a nice car, um, but obviously, they've got quite a bit more that they need to do um, to get their cars up to spec straight away. They are impressive cars, the iPaces. But um, it's funny that you said you saw one because I was going to ask you, have you ever seen one on the road? And I, I yeah, actually that's right, have, And given it's been on sale for well, certainly what nearly six months. I've well, never it's been seen a while. one. Yeah, exactly. Whereas around right, about, right. You know, even in rural areas in Northumberland, around between Northumberland and Edinburgh, you very often see Tesla Model S's. I mean, I'm not saying they're common, but they are around. You do see, ah, you do see them. The city, yeah, you definitely see them. You will see a few of them. Whereas the iPace, ah. which I think is a, a nicer, more innovative, newer design, and we, we, we ah. both drove them, didn't we, uh, last year um, in June. And uh, I was ah. really impressed by it. It's a great car. I can't understand why. Yeah, that was, that was when I sadly didn't manage to get a shot of. Uh, ah, but I wanted you? to do it right. this year. No, I didn't manage to get that one. Um, but, uh, but no, I mean, it looked amazing. And I know you said it was fantastic and it does get a very good review. So if they're anything like that, you know, for their smaller cars, if they can put the same battery pack into an XC or a, an XF, then it might actually be quite a good car. Exactly. And if they can get to the market quicker with an XC electric or something, then that could do really well because the yeah. waiting list for the Tesla Model 3 is really long. And um, they don't seem to be able to get them. In fact, it sounds like they're not really going to get into the UK market till 2020. There's a huge gap yeah. there in the market that actually nobody's exploited. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but uh, no doubt, I Jack and Driver will blame Brexit for this. Is that what they're saying? Well, people were trying to say that, but they're saying it's just part of a, an unstable future. But then, I mean, look, China's down by quite a bit in terms of they've had a bit of a downturn, although they think it will pick up again this year. Um, and of course, uh, Europe is struggling a bit. Germany's lost over 10% in sales in the last year. Um, it was a fine up until July and then it kind of tanked quite a bit. 
So, yeah. and that's one of the biggest, you know, car making uh, countries, certainly. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, perhaps Brexit will have an effect. It is. Well, I think China is down, was it 8% or something like that? And yeah, it's, that's yeah. a lot because the, China is just an absolutely massive yeah. market and for, for JLR, yeah. quite, quite a big one. But if they haven't invested in petrol engines and that they keep producing cars that look a bit odd, I mean, the discovery, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that only seven thousand miles in the not in the UK. It's really hard. It's really hard. It's bad. It looks totally wrong. And the new yeah, XF that right. was launched was it last year or the year before. Yeah. I, I saw one the other day, and uh, I, it looked exactly the same as the previous yeah. one, and exactly the same uh, as the XE. There's nothing distinctive about the car yeah. whatsoever. So to a casual observer, they haven't updated that car for 12 yeah. years. Or well, it's actually behind the scenes. It's probably uh, quite high tech stuff. And the XJ, uh, and again, uh, it's an Odd looking car. It's never looked right. It's, it is. It's not, well, it's different. But I, know, I, it's elegant. I, I know you quite like it. I but love it. It's so spec sensitive, Hugh. I mean, if yeah, you get the true. wrong color with the wrong wheel, it looks awful. It looks like a Ford Orion. Uh, I mean, certainly I have to say, if I ever immigrated to Spain, that would be my car. That would be, if I've got my, my uh, mansion in Marbella, that would be the car I'd have. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be running a bar to launder money down in Marbella. And you'd... <laughs> Cruising around with your chest hair hanging out and your gold medallion in your exactly. Jaguar XJ. <laughs> <laughs> you know me so well. You know me when the, the tax man comes after you. Yeah. <laughs> Time to jump over the wall, you know. <laughs> it's very fact that that is the image of that car. It tells you all you need to know. Some slightly superannuated gangster on the south of Spain. If that's the image that they've got, then you can see why they're not really selling to the, the tech millionaires in California. <laughs> Oh, it's quite it's quite a thing. So they certainly they've got a long way to go and a lot of work to do. Um, but they say the Land Rover side is a lot better. Um, and I have to say on your thing about the discovery, I mean, all it needs is a slightly squared off boot. That's all you know. It's a tiny little bit of work to fix that, and it would be fine. I don't know why they haven't already done it. You think they would have they would have sorted it within a few months after the initial launch, um, when people were you know quite shocked by it. And it, it does look a bit strange. And it surely wouldn't have cost much to get that sorted. That, it uh, looks so odd. I mean, you look at the front and think, oh, it looks good. Yeah. They've made the discovery, they've got it up to date, or it got the design language or whatever they call it. And then yeah. you look at the back and you go, ooh. Ah, it's hard. <laughs> what have they done wrong? Yeah. It's terrible. It, it is really just awful. that little and now they light. are, you know, I'm not even sure about that. Again, they produce so many basic ones with terrible specifications, sort of ah. beige ones with tiny little frilly wheels on. And it doesn't look right. They took yeah. the back. It's something not right about that car. Yeah, they've got to be well set to get it right. They've got strong colours, big wheels, and they've got to look quite kind of mafia-esque to kind of make it work, I think. Yeah, I, I agree. Right. If, you, if you go for the big wheel, maybe the 21-inch wheel, um, black bodywork with all the trimmings, then they can look quite smart. Aye. But it just in most ones that you see, it just look terrible. Aye. And they are cheap. I keep getting uh, messages through from the, the local Land Rover dealer in Kelso, I think it's called uh, Lloyd's. Oh, yeah, it's called. Lloyd's. Uh, yeah. yeah. Offering the Velar for four two nine down, four two yeah. nine a month. I know, I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? That to me seems quite cheap. Four two nine down. I mean, that's yeah. all you need. So no yeah. deposit. Yeah, I think that's because they are ordering some quite nice models. You know, if you go in the the web builder, you can you know choose a decent color quite cheaply. You don't need an awful lot of spec to make it look quite good. Um, and so the, and because it's fairly cheap to begin with at that level, then it's it, the residual is going to be rock solid on them on a maybe say like a two or three year deal. Um, and the, but they're not that so cheap. Well, in terms of list price, maybe they're not. Um, but uh, but I think they're, they're, that's they're the price, things. isn't it? I mean, if you're looking at a car, I look at the list price, and mm -hmm. not everyone is going to go to cardedadvisor.co.uk. I mean, they should, but not everyone does that. They just look at the price and think, well, it's just too expensive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and or they just look at the monthly cost and and see what's there, isn't it? And see what they can afford. But no, I certainly think they've got a lot of work to do. I do like the new Range Rover Evoque, I have to say. I think the, the new kind of the improvements they've done to that to make it look even slicker um, is a nice car. Yeah, but it's it, there's no step change there at all. It's I think Jaguar have got the same sort of problem as sort of Apple have. I mean, Apple have, they know, I think Amazon's actually overtaken them there at the world's mm. biggest company. Every phone is just an iteration of the last one with a tiny little tweak. Uh, and people are just thinking, well, I'll just keep uh, the old one. And I, I think if I had an Evoke, I, I know, you know, I'm quite interested in cars, and I can barely tell the difference between yeah. the old one and the new one. 
So it's just it hasn't moved the game on at all. So why would I um why would I pay why would I buy another one? I don't now, get if it. If you had a football in his waist, you can. <laughs> <laughs> just because you can yeah but what one of the other things i was going to talk about was the, the car right. finance and i think a lot of these companies are getting profit oh, yeah. warnings now and potentially getting into trouble because i think that the car finance is just the biggest no, no. bombshell i was listening to a uh, radio recording um from someone's podcast it was a podcast yeah. on a radio show and apparently in some american companies i think it's bmw they are rolling over yes, negative like in cars into the next yeah, finance yeah. deal. And people are bringing over 15,000 US dollars of negative equity in cars, and it's being refinanced cheaply. Well, as soon as the interest rates start to go up, all these deals, they're just going right. to collapse. I mean, the, the whole thing yeah, is going to yeah. collapse. You're going to be buying Velas for nine 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 five. I mean, I'll be it's... able to get one. I'll actually be able to get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can get away from those Romanian exactly. junk boxes. And I'll be able to get a sticker on the back of my Vela saying, my other car is a Ferrari 250F. You know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> My other car is a Ferrari <laughs> Portofino, which I got for <laughs> 1995. 1954, you know. You know? It was like, you know. <laughs> uh... Dear yes. Lord, yeah, it's all yeah. going to go wrong. And uh, apparently, again, I haven't checked any of these figures, so it all comes with a health warning. But Ford Credit Services is now bigger than Ford Credit Motor Company. Me. So the credit, effectively Ford, if, if Ford was to be a company, uh, basically introduce itself on the market um, on a flotation, it would be a bank. It wouldn't be a car company. How That's crazy bad, is that? Isn't it? So effectively, it's a no. bank with a car company built on in order to sell products, fin to, in order to yeah. sell finance. The reason that they can sell these loans and make money out of the debt is because they can attach it to yeah. the cars. So the cars are basically ordered by Ford Credit to be sold. And I mean, uh, when this goes boom, uh, I, I don't know if these companies will survive it because the credit companies are either as big or very nearly as big as the car companies that they are supposed to be serving you think the credit company would be and they may be 10 or 15 percent of the business but they're not they're bigger than the entire business aye and they've been doing that for years it has been getting bigger and bigger yeah well we've had interest rates on the freaking floor since 2008 aye. and nobody's used to high interest rate environments we've had 11 12 years of low interest rates if you get interest rates going from up from 0.5 up to even just four i mean which is not unusual historically aye. four five six percent is not Unusual. Mm -hmm. um, all these deals are going. To, they're going to start falling like the house of cards. Well, I think unless they're they're all fixed finance though, so they should be okay because they're locked in. Not normally when you have a finance deal, I think they're locked in um, to the car, so it shouldn't increase if the if the interest rate goes up. Surely. Yeah, but what when when these deals run out, the people are going to have they don't own these cars, so they're all going to hand them back, and there's going to be no <laughs> money to buy the new one, right? So well, they're not going to make yeah. any money selling new cars, any money selling new finances, and they're going to be absolutely flooded with, I'm not joking, tens of millions of three-year-old cars that nobody can buy because they have no money. Uh, yeah, it's, and it's, that, well, that can bring down all of these companies. Yeah. Well, they did say... I mean, the BMW finance is on crack, according to this guy in America. <laughs> well, that was something else. That was an incredible... Uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the company game makes your hair stand on end. I mean, it yeah. really does. It, uh, yeah. It's extraordinary. It's interesting times ahead with car finance, Hugh. If yeah. I could sort of recommend anybody if they want a new car, it's just if you can save a little bit of cash up, you might get something really nice in 18 months' time. Really nice. <laughs> well, when that was the thing, because in 2009, when the, the, the market just fell, I mean, completely, and, you know, trying to get a trading figure was incredibly low. Um, and then, you know, and because people, even people who had really good credit ratings were struggling to get it. But I, I wonder if we might be a little bit better because what was interesting, um, I was reading figures today that for British car auctions, uh, they're actually saying that the residual uh, values of vehicles have gone up by about 5% in the whole year. Um, the demand has, has, has gone up. I think part of it is that they didn't have that many cars in September. A lot of manufacturers were caught um, on the hop with the new emissions regulations. Um, so they didn't build as many. And so a lot of nearly new cars were in huge demand because people wanted to change their car and they couldn't. Um, so they're saying that the, the news values have gone up um, quite a bit in the last year. 
So I just wonder what's going to happen um, as they keep going, because residuals have been a little bit stronger for certain cars in this country um, over the last few years. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, it's, it's really unpredictable. I mean, mm. I, I know lots of people use these websites, uh, webuycar.com, uh, and, uh, you know, like you, I'm sure you do the same occasion. I put my own car through it. And yeah. uh, my car's a relatively, well, it's four years old diesel hatchback. And having been worth maybe £8,000 a year ago, it's now worth near £9,000 on webuycar.com. Yeah, it's and crazy. I still work out why. It's gone up at £1,000 in a year yeah. in value. Well, that's nuts. Well, apparently, because of the diesel um, gate about two or three years ago, everyone just started buying petrol cars. And this, the fuel yeah. figures on the petrol cars, they're, they're, they may say they can do 45, 50 gun, but actually most people in real life are getting high 30s out of these things. Whereas yeah, if you have a yeah. diesel golf, you can get high 50s, low 60s without really thinking about it. So suddenly, yeah. people that normally would buy a second-hand diesel car, there aren't any. Because yeah, everyone's yeah. been buying petrol cars. So there's no two or three year old diesels on the market. So if you come to the market with a relatively clean, lowish mileage diesel, people want it because they want the economy. They yeah, can't afford yeah. a new one that 18, 19, 20,000 pounds, but they're willing to pay eight, nine, 10,000 pounds for a tiny second hand one and take the uh -huh. advantage of the fuel economy. Yeah, yeah. And also my, my car, because it's a bit older, it's a um, 20 pound tax car. Whereas everything now is 140. So immediately you're saving yeah. 120 pounds on the tax. So it's, it's mm. fascinating what's happening with the, um, with, with the market. It's totally unpredictable. I, I never would have thought that. You make money out of my car. Yeah. I mean, that happened with my Datsia as well. They've sent me quite a few emails and it's gone up by about 400 pounds in about yeah. six weeks. Um, which is not bad. Um, for what it is, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're cruel. You're cruel. You know. <laughs> well, no, we're going to the end of the first, coming to the end of the first half of the Cardio Advisor podcast show, and we'll be right back after this quick break. At cardioadvisor.co.uk, we can help you save thousands of pounds on your next new car or van. And we can also source second-hand cars as well. And we can save you money on car rental, whether it be in the UK and abroad. Just click our rental link on the website. And we'll give you a free gift if you trade in your car with Way By Any Car using our special website link. So go to the website now and see how much you can save. And it's back to the show. Thanks for listening. And welcome back to the Cardio Advisor podcast show with me, Hugh Hattrick, and my special guest, Jonathan Sutherland. I'm so, still here. I haven't been arrested yet. Yeah, I know we're still on air, which is pretty good going. Now, it's not just Jaguar that's in serious trouble, but as we were speaking a little bit earlier on, um, you mentioned Ford as well. They're in serious trouble. Um, in fact, there were rumours uh, potentially that they might even withdraw in the long term from Europe altogether, uh, just like General Motors did, and simply concentrate on their American uh, and uh, Asian kind of markets because they they tend to make a bit more money there. Um, what do you think about that? That's extraordinary, isn't it? Just to completely withdraw from the UK market. But when you come to think yeah. of it, that is what the other manufacturers did, isn't it? I think uh, Europe's uh, always been very hard to make money in, in Europe. I don't really know why. I, yeah, I think they've got to have the right range and it's got to be a sensible price and they've got to be decent residuals. And for a lot of these mass market manufacturers, they just overprice their cars new. There's huge discounts and then the residuals are rubbish, you know, or it, or it just takes a huge hit. So it's always going to be expensive or there isn't enough demand second hand. Um, and it must, you know, and also they, they sponsor everything. You know, they have football, rugby, you know, everything, yeah. Formula One. And that must cost them an absolute fortune. Yeah, I'm trying to work out why they make it. Is it something to do with the high tax society? People haven't got the money to, to buy the cars, whereas obviously taxes are far lower in Asia in America and Canada. So is yeah. it people just tax too much? I mean, I, I know I don't buy cars, at expensive cars anymore because the taxes are too high. But both my taxes yeah. that I have to pay and the tax to own the car um, and also the quality of the roads in Europe with the recessions and the basically becoming a giant welfare state are no one spending money on the roads anymore. So you don't want a nice car. I wonder if these things are significant in any way. Yeah, I would also say as well, I think we demand more for our European cars. You know, we want good handling. We want good ride. We want good fuel economy. We want high speed. You know, so we want, you know, good acceleration. We want everything. 
And I think it does cost a bit more to make European cars than American ones. Um, in terms of that's the kind of feeling that you get. You know, if you go to Florida and you drive your hire car, it's usually quite wallowy and not phenomenal unless it's a Ford Mustang or something. Um, oh, but, right. you know, you come across... Anything here, applies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> like, but, uh, you know, you come, you know, you drive a hire car in Europe and it tends to be a lot better unless it's a Vauxhall Mocha. But, uh, yeah, uh, but most other cars are fine. Your pet hate, absolutely. But then yeah. again, you get... Budget cars in Europe, don't you? I mean, Dacia, for example, is a budget manufacturer that does pretty well in Europe. Are they just cheap yeah, US yeah. brands? What are they doing right? I think because it's it's older technology, but it's proven, and they still handle quite well. I mean, I'm always quite impressed with my Dacia, just how well it handles. I mean, I honestly never would think you'd ever say that about a, about a Dacia, but it actually handles like the old Clio. You know, it's 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 got good. It's it's actually a nice feel to the car. And it drives well, you know, because I had a Hyundai i30 estate beforehand, and it was terrible. And it didn't drive anywhere near as well as the Datsia. I mean, that could, you couldn't condemn a car even any more than that, you know, <laughs> if it can't be a yeah. Datsia that's based on all the technology. Um, and yet, also, there's no import tariffs on Romanian cars, whereas U.S. cars, because of the EU, no. puts on a 10% tariff on uh, on on import from the USA. This is one of Donald Trump's points. The EU tax the US 10%, whereas the US only tax the big German manufacturers, I think it's 2 or 3%. Yeah. So it's a total imbalance. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that might change. I mean, that's the other thing. If we do get Brexit um, quickly, hopefully get a good deal um, or a no deal, then perhaps we'll get this American trade deal, which means that um, there'll be taxes will be cut completely and we can do free trade with them. And we might see some really cheap cars coming over from, from the US and it might also boost um, Jaguar and Land Rover and the cars that are made over here that they can then export. Yeah, I mean, it may do. I'm not quite sure what what the effect would be. Everything is so unpredictable. Mm. And it depends what happens in Europe. It depends what happens to the exchange rate. You think the pound may drop slightly, so that might make our exports um, more um, appealing, I suppose, to people who've got a stronger currency they can buy in. It's just very, very hard to know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. But it's a very exciting time for the car market. I mean, there's so many good cars coming out. Um, I also heard that Volkswagen uh, was going to launch a people's electric car um, uh, for less than £18,000. That was on uh, the news the other day. Yeah. Um, so that's quite interesting. So it's beginning to kind of come that way. I'm still not completely convinced that electric will be the way forward. I think it might be more like hydrogen or other things because... I just think they're jumping the gun a bit, and I just don't know how good they are or how how sustainable they are. I mean, look at the kind of the technology they have to use to build them. You just think, and surely that's going to be more expensive and harder to find the bits. Um, so it's it's certainly you know a petrol engine, you know, combustion engine is much easier and cheaper to build, um, and can be easily recycled. But um, so it's it is. Uh, but I think the the battery densities are getting better all the time. Yeah. The the energy density in a battery. Um, they are getting there with it. And uh, I think if you could get a three or 400 mile range and get a reasonable recharge in maybe 15 minutes, yeah. then I'm in. Aye, aye. Uh, but I think I do want that because at the minute I can fill up my car. It costs maybe 55 pounds and I can drive it to London and almost back from Edinburgh. Yeah, which is amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, you almost did that when you went down to, um, yeah. to Hertfordshire. Yeah, yeah. It was incredible. Yeah more or less air and back on a tank yeah. with your entire family. I mean, if you had the train, it would probably cost you about 600 quid. I'm not even joking. And uh, whereas you do it in your luxury Dacia with all your luggage, door to door. Yeah. You know, no one taking you to the railway station, no refuels. No, no. Uh, you know, it's, you're reliable, really, and the car costs you virtually nothing. Well, I've done over 730 miles on the current tank, and it does, it now, it's not lighting up 730 yet. 730 miles. And that cost me 65 quid. So, um, it's not too bad. That is astonishing mileage. Yeah, yeah. It was average. What was the Q like behind you on the M1 here? <laughs> <laughs> I never look at my mirrors. You know? <laughs> Were you one of those people that drives two inches behind a semi so that you can get the, um, yeah, yeah. The the <laughs> <laughs> you see them. You do see them. There always used to be someone in a Volvo 340 DL, an old codger. And he was about three foot off the back of a semi truck, trying to get the slipstream with his eyes on stalks and his wife <laughs> screaming at him to give some more space. And he's thinking, "Think of the economy. We're doing eighty to the gallon." <laughs> he's squashed like a 
a matchbox. <laughs> there's a car when the in. guy breaks. <laughs> I tell you what I saw. Anyway, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting story to tell your grandchildren through the time you got seventy two miles to gallon on your way to Hertfordshire. <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds like it's very nice. Yeah, that, you know. The time that you were power sliding a Ferrari Testarossa up the Renner Pass, not, not your <laughs> MD challenge. Do you think I've got something wrong there? I think I have. I? <laughs> the thing is, though, when you get to our age, that's what happens. Yeah. Now, on my screen, I don't have the G-Force meter, I have the MPG meter. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe when you get, your, very, new, very when you get your new... Su- when you get your new Suzuki Gemini, I'm sure it will have a G meter as well on it, I'm sure. It, well, it will do when you roll it upside down. Exactly. <laughs> Got the kind of, remember the Mitsubishi Shogun used to have an attitude indicator. Yeah. You know, what your, yeah, they were quite good. It's normally upside down, the, the old SJs. I, I know that's the only thing. But uh, no, that's the thing. Oh, well, I was going to say, do you think there's any particular bargains out there just now on the market that you think are worth looking at for our listeners? Well, I've been looking for a cheapie for myself. I want to, I've got an itch. I've got an itch to buy a car, Hugh. And I mm. don't know why. Sometimes I just have to go and buy something. And I, I wouldn't mind a cheapie just to keep it as a sort of spare car. So you put into Auto Trader, you want lowest mileage and you put a max price of say £5,000. And the stuff that comes up is extraordinary. There's a couple mm. of Vauxhall Vivas, basic ones. And I think it was a 17 plate one for 4995 Goodness, that's nothing. I haven't even been crashed, because most of them have been crashed at that price. And they get it done maybe 40,000 miles. It's quite a lot in a year. Mm. But 4995 for a, must, a must car. Must have been Ubered. Is it Ubered or Deliveroo or something? I don't know. It's probably absolutely rinsed. But, I mean, <laughs> less than 5K for a car. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's pretty good coin, really, isn't it? A bit of pre-reg VW ups for, I think, about 7,200. For a move up, not even the basic one. So that that's quite good. And those cars, yeah. after three or four years, are still worth five grand, four or five grand. So yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? They have big demand on them. You're going to be talking a couple hundred pounds a month to have that car over a couple yeah. of years. It's just cheap as chips. Um, and if you get one that's registered before, was it 17, April 17 or whatever it was, then you get the either zero tax or 20 pound tax. So that saves you money as well. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the thing. Oh, it's, uh, well, that's that's phenomenal because I mean, they're phenomenal deals. I was going to say I saw a Renault Clio RS um, for just two thousand um, pounds. It was quite an old one; it was like an old six plate, um, but uh, it was in one of the classifieds, and they were recommending it in Autocar magazine as a, a phenomenal buy. But imagine two grand yeah. for a Renault Clio RS. I mean, they're they're great cars, and that's something. When you get one of them, well, I did wonder. I, I I really want something a bit more fun, something I can. You want something to take and give a bit of a. Those roads, the roads of Jim Clark and <laughs> all the greats that came from the borders. Aye. Retrace their steps in your PRS. <laughs> hey, yes. On that note, yeah, he's early hedge hopping, you know, but it was the way. But, uh, well, that's fantastic. Well, look, we need to end the show there tonight, but we'll be back, I'm sure, in a couple of weeks' time uh, where we can get some more updates. I've got Andrew Dixon on the show. Uh, we're going to be recording that on Thursday night. Um, for next week's uh, Cardio Advisor podcast show. Uh, I've also got Super GT in two weeks' time, uh, who's the excellent gamer, one of the best gamers in the country uh, on YouTube. Um, You can go to Super GT on YouTube and you'll find uh, thousands thousands and thousands of videos. Um, And he's working on getting into the FIA World Championships for the end of this year. Um, So he's going to be speaking to me in a couple of weeks' time. Um, But, yeah, so have you any messages at all for our listeners before we go, John? Well, I just think there could be some very good deals to be had this year. I think there's going to be a lot of uncertainty as we come into Brexit or potentially Brexit if we do it on the 29th of March. And um, I just think it's there's deals to be done. Uh, some of the stuff yeah, is as cheap as I've ever seen it. Some stuff is surprisingly expensive. So my yeah. advice would be, as always, go to cardadvisor.com or .co.uk or ring Hugh, and he'll help you out to get the best deal. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the plug. That's brilliant. Anytime, Excellent. anytime. So you know the address for the check. <laughs> yeah, it bounced a long time ago. You know? <laughs> Excellent. No problem at all. Well, we wish all our listeners a wonderful week, um, safe driving, and we will speak to you soon. You've been listening to the Cardio Advisor podcast show with me, Hugh Hattrick, and my very special guest, Jonathan Sutherland. Bye for now. 
For more information, go to cardoadvisor.co.uk and you can see all the special offers that we have on the website. And remember, we have our YouTube channel, which is at Hugh Hattrick, and also we have our podcast on Podbean, on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Anchor FM. And if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe to our shows, or you can donate every month for just a pound. Thanks for listening, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.